first of all, we need to learn about the issues, the issues, scripturally, biblically, therefore we can understand what's going on in history, you know what I'm saying, because most are under the Illuminati uh, propaganda machine and the mind control the Illuminati, so therefore they're caught in like a frozen psychological state, and we address that in another set of videos coming out in 210, so look forward to them, look for them and request them, alright, if you don't see them on our website or if they're not available. So, it's no coincidence that the Bible speaks about the mark of the beast, especially in Revelation, as well as those who have the seal of God. So what is the seal of God? What is the seal of God's elect? Because you need to receive this seal if you are one of the faithful and true brothers or sisters. You understand? And not Satan's or the mark of the beast. But Satan has tried to keep you all from receiving the true seal of his imperial majesty. So first, let's just touch on what a seal is. Because we need to learn about these issues that are involved. And ones need to make their choice. They need to decide. They need to choose. But they need to be informed about what's what in order to make the best and most correct choice and not to be deceived or deluded in this time by the half-truths and the lies that are out there because it's closing time we're now in the closing time of the vision of the prophecy of the so-called end time or last days you understand prophetic events so now we're coming to this close of the probation the probation for humanity and in this close for the probation of humanity, there are the seven last plagues. And then there is this last battle, you understand, on the earth. And we'll look at these things a little bit later on. Now, where you stand, where you stand, you understand, or where you fall, or what you fall for, you understand, is determined by the choice that you make. But the choice that you make is determined on the information and the accuracy of the information that you receive. Now, first of all, let us ask the question, what is God's seal? What is the seal of God's elect? Now, the scriptures, as we have mentioned, Revelation, this speaks of the mark of the beast on one hand, those who receive the mark of the beast, but then those who have God's seal. First of all, a seal is something that has to do with legal, legal affairs, a legal matter, a lawful issue. A law is stamped with a seal of the ruling government. When the Bible speaks of the kingdom of God, you understand, it is actually speaking of the government, the Mengist, the government of God as well as it speaks of the kingdom of the heavens. Now, the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of God that's found in the Gospels, New Testament, is distinguished by five marks. There are five distinguishing points of the two. They are not literally the same, and we need to understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the heavens. You understand? Because the, one of the main differences is that the kingdom of God is only entered into through the new birth, through being born again, as Jesus Christos, the perfect example, says, and as His Imperial Majesty Karamawi Hala Selassie bears witness. So we, as faithful Rastafari, must bear witness to that. So a law is stamped with a seal of the ruling or the authorized government. Now, a seal has three parts. This is interesting as well. The tripartite, triune sense, you understand, of the scriptures, of the word, you understand, first power of the Trinity, you understand, as well included. But let's deal with the three parts, you understand, of a seal. First of all, what is the true seal and throne name of his imperial majesty? That's what's the name of this particular teaching right here. But let us give you a close up of God's elects true seal this is God's elect true seal that you see before you now the seal has the lion of Judah conquering lion of the tribe of Judah carrying the banner you understand with the cross as well as the crown that also has a cross on it now around this 
circle around the cipher or the circle it says moa on vessa the m and the geta yehuda as it does right below it then it says the name of the ruler edamawi haila selase then it says the ruler's title you understand the ruler's title which is siume egzi abher then it states the territory over which the ruler of the seal God's elect true seal rules and there it says negusa negest ze etiopia negusa negest ze etiopia so a seal has these three parts one the name of the ruler two the ruler's title and three the territory over which he rules now when a government a mengist uh, or a kingdom's seal is on a hug is on a law or it's on a currency it makes that law or that currency official as many of y'all I and I would say I official but it makes that official when the seal is on the law or the currency the whole the entire loyal and faithful nation stands behind it stands behind that seal defends that seal protects that seal and keeps that seal the entire faithful nation now as psalm 68 verse 6 says it says the rebellious dwell on the dry land but the promise for us who are faithful rastafari mitmenan is verse 31 where it says princes shall come out of Egypt Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God that's the whole entire loyal nation now God's seal makes his law official the entire loyal universe stands behind God's seal so it's very important for us to understand the importance of God's elect true seal of God's elect true seal anyone who is disloyal to the seal of the ruling government and to the law upon which it is attached is to be looked upon as being disloyal to the government itself to the kingdom itself I remember we're speaking of the king of kings of Kadamaw with Hala Selassie this will help us to better understand the events that have happened during the time of the creeping coup you understand the rebellion against God's elect just as a government's ruler's seal is placed in his law or on the law to make it official God's seal is in his law and is placed on his law and his government has its seal this is prophecy right here that we're we're, we're dealing with now here's what God says here's what Yahweh Eloheinu because he has a connection says Lotus Pat here's what he says in Isaiah 8 and 16 he says in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16 bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples so this is also discipleship you understand based not just on new testament but from the old testament this is why it is said that the messiah that Christ spoke through the prophets and here in Isaiah 8 and 16 we have disciples it says bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples my decamas amorit where are we sealed this is the now the next key question where are we sealed you know since this is the seal of God's true elect This is the seal of God's true elect. You understand? But where are we sealed? We're sealed in our mind, in our foreheads according to the scripture. We are sealed in our frontal lobe in our minds. His law is to be in our hearts. You understand? Under the new the Hadith Kidan, under the new covenant. His promise is this according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16. This is the covenant This is the kal kidan that I will make with them after those days. This is the covenant 
the overstand that I will make with them after which day. So we have to overstand the historical aspect of this. You understand? After those days, saith Yahweh, saith Adonai, I will put my laws in their heart and in their minds. See the frontal lobe? In their minds will I write them. Who's going to write them? Is it me or you? No, he's going to write it through the new birth and through the receptivity of the manifest caduce of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that places the seal of God and of God's elect in our foreheads when we choose it, when we receive it. You understand? We are called. You understand? We are to choose it, become chosen, and then to be faithful to it. Tripartite, three parts. Once again, one, one two, two, three. Two, two, three.